Hello, welcome back to Mathematica with Nikolai. Today we will discuss how to implement some non-commutative algebras in Mathematica. And first thing we will do, we will implement the algebra of harmonic oscillator, a, a dagger, and then we will move on uh, to defining supersymmetry algebra. So more precisely, we are going to define a multidimensional uh, ladder operator algebra so we have a going down a dagger going up and they satisfy these commutation relations uh, so there are several approaches uh, on how this can be done mathematica so i prefer quite controlling uh, approach where uh, i want to be in charge of what is going on rather than letting mathematica to do whatever uh, they want so I, I'm going to define it rule by rule. So first, let's define, uh, say, the simple one that A and A commute with each other. So I will do it in the following way. So I probably should say that I'm going to use this dot for non-commutative product. So what is dot? Let's uh, go into that. A dot B. So it doesn't do anything, but you may know that if you do dot between two reads, actually it computes the dot product so for just uh, for non least it doesn't do much uh, and uh, it is useful to look into full form so i just apply full form to see how it looks in internally for mathematica so you see equivalently to write an a dot b you can write dot of a and b and let's add c so these are completely equivalent representations all right so having understood that, I'm going to uh, create a rule which will allow me to interchange a i and a j to a j dot a i, but I only want uh, to do it um, in the case when i is bigger than j, because the goal of this rule is to, of all these rules, is to bring an expression to some kind of form, and also we will be trying to move uh, annihilation operators a to the right as a dent, we may want to act on the vacuum. All right, so let me explain some details of the syntax. So underscore, uh, as you know, refers to patterns. So this left-hand side of the rule uh, means that this rule will be applied to A of a, any one argument dot A of any other argument. Arguments could be also equal. So then uh, you see this symbol uh, means delayed rule. So delayed rule uh, means that it will be implemented only when I and J are kind of known or ready to mathematically explicitly. And this allows us to add an extra condition at the end and the syntax for that is slash semicolon. And uh, the condition as you see is that we only apply this rule when I is bigger than J. All right, so let's see whether it works ai then i apply the rule uh, you see it interchanges them and if i say have 11 then it won't touch them all right so that works pretty well so what's next the next rule i can just copy paste and do the same for the dagger oops a dagger i just denote ad all right, maybe already at this stage, it's, it could be uh, good to actually introduce some nice formatting. So for that, um, the cheap way of doing that is to use this format function. This uh, is just to make everything look nicer. AI. So I, I just want, whenever I type A1, uh, to make Mathematica in the output to write A1. So maybe actually I want a subscript. So, right, this is better. And I also want to define similar thing with Dagger, sub uh, superscript. That's what we need. Uh, super, okay, this is sub superscript script voila and then i add dagger 
Uh, do you remember you can uh, type some uh, symbols using later, right? So that you press escape, then type your symbol in later, and then press escape again. And not all symbols will work. This. Okay, now again, you see I interchange subscript and the superscript. So this way it should be nice. All right, so now you see it's more digestible as this output. And if I run this again, it should get much nicer. So let me copy it somewhere on top. So next rule, finally, the main rule is when A meets A dagger, and I want to move A to the right. So I don't need this condition anymore, but now I need a chronicler symbol. And uh, well, you can use some if or there is uh, Kronecker defined for us in mathematics. So we are not using any packages. Uh, of course, there are billions of packages which probably will allow you to implement different algebras, but let's first learn how to do it uh, from the first principles. All right, so uh, now let's see how that works. Uh, so uh, let's play with this expression, which is rich enough, and try to bring it to the canonical form. So I apply rule three, and you see indeed it moves a one to the right a little bit, nothing else happens. Now I can apply it again, and it commutes it to the right, and now we face a new problem, right? So you see, uh, we want actually this dot product to be uh, linear, and that's an extra rule which we have now to implement. Rule four is, so now let me type it first and then I will explain. So I want um, to define a rule which would open the brackets for me. Right? So um, it will target any expression which has a dot with one argument which has plus addition inside. And then it opens it up into two dots, right? So now let's uh, go through that in more detail. So you see this new thing is three underscores. Three underscores refers to any number of arguments. So it could be no arguments, one argument, two arguments, and so on. So because in, uh, in this case, we have one argument to the left from the expression. Uh, which contains plus. Uh, but it could be also in the very beginning, in this case, a note will be like empty set. So three underscores mean uh, any set of arguments, including empty set. And I have two of those, so either to the right or to the left. So this dot, uh, this pattern will match any expression which contains addition at any stage. And then the right hand side, quite obvious, I just write the sum of dots. And remember that dot symbol is equivalent uh, to writing dot with several arguments. All right, so let's check this one. Uh, rule four, and you see it nicely expands. So now we have another problem that this one here, we need to explain to Mathematica that numbers, they can be treated in a, in a simpler way, we can just remove them from under the dot. So I define rule number five, which tells that whenever you have okay, a number and uh, that introduces a new thing for us, um, uh, just pull this outside, right? This way. Uh, so what is this question mark uh, numeric Q? So numeric Q is just a test, uh, a function which returns either true or false. So for one, for two, it will be true. And then for R, it will be false, right? That's as simple as that. And you can construct your own test function, which is a true false type, and then write it after the underscore, after the question mark. Uh, and uh, then mathematical will first test whether this condition is satisfied. So you can also do it like we did before, uh, put uh, slash uh, semicolon and then do numeric Q A1. Uh, but so it functions a little bit differently. And in this case, uh, that's a bit more preferable. 
because uh, you don't want Mathematica to probably um, parse the whole expression and, and only then find that it's not applicable. So let's apply this rule. You see, it works nicely. Um, what's next? So uh, another rule maybe you should be useful to have is the following that if we have any a say here i can say five times a d and then it, it will block the whole process right because this five will be on the way so i want to get rid of this five now so i just write a similar rule like before with a2 inside right so this rule six will target this situations rule six Okay, okay. So it works nicely. The only problem that you see now I have to apply it by hand many times. So first of all, first improvement I can use double slash dot. And double slash dot will just uh, repeatedly apply a certain rule until uh, it is reasonable, until there are any changes created. Um, but this is not enough. And because, I mean, in principle, I have to apply all these rules, so it's better to just define some helper function, something which is easy to type. Uh, and I just apply all those rules inside this function. Rule 4. Rule 5. Okay, sorry, it's a bit boring this for you guys. So, no, we don't have 7 yet, right? So this function will now uh, allow us to do it in one go. So what is missing? So what is missing is the following. That still, if I apply it again, it, it, it will give some modification. So why is that? So you, you can complain that we already did this repeated rule. Uh, but the point is that actually it matters in which order you apply this rule. So after applying as many times as you want rule one and then rule two, you may want to apply rule one again. So either you have to manually type many times slash slash cm or you can use this function fixed point. So it's kind of analogous to repeated replacement. What it does, it again applies certain function uh, as many times as it is needed until there are any modifications in the output. So this capital CM will now uh, apply this small CM to the death until there are any changes. It's also actually what is useful in the CM is expand all, so there are no brackets at that, right? All right, one final thing I want to add uh, in this part of the lecture is uh, a vacuum state, right? It's kind of useful. So the rule for the vacuum state, let's denote it omega, and it will be just at, uh, at the end of the dot sequence, uh, is that it is annihilated by the annihilation operator. That's why it's called annihilation operator, by the way, if you didn't know. Uh, and so that's quite easy and very flexible. You see this approach, you can define any uh, things like that. So now I can just add omega at the end and simplify. You see, I get killed all these uh, terms where AX on the vacuum. So this uh, mass of oscillator simplifies to that one. All right, so in the second part, uh, I will now build uh, upon this approach. Uh, and use oscillator representation for some simple uh, supersymmetry algebra, which is also used as a part of the Lonti series uh, uh, by uh, Costis. And uh, he proposed me to do this little exercise for you. So the second part uh, of the lecture uh, is uh, made in association with this Lonti London Theory Institute, which uh, is a great uh, channel on YouTube, which contains uh, lectures in theoretical physics by the leading experts in the topic, of course, including my own lecture, 
on integrability. Uh, and so now we will move on uh, to defining supersymmetry algebra. So now we are ready to take our uh, knowledge to the next level and implement uh, um, n equals 4 super conformal symmetry in four dimensions. So for that, uh, we will have to define a super oscillator algebra. So in addition to the usual ladder operators A, uh, which we already implemented, we also need B. And uh, so B is more or less the same as C. And also C, but C, you see, it contains anti-commutator. In case you haven't seen this before, this is uh, like commutator just with plus in between. And we also need this Ds, which are also uh, fermionic uh, oscillators. All right, so in order to keep this neat, uh, let me first define the Kronecker uh, delta shortcut. Right, so delta before was just a symbol. Now I can use it as a uh, Kronecker symbol. And um, I want to define all possible right hand sides. So KM will be referred to super or usual commutator. So it will be either Kronecker in the case of a, a dagger. It will define this so that if I want to change. I change only in one place. And also for B, commutator is this. And for C, so it is a refer to commutator or anti-commutator. We'll have to deal with it later. And what else? We also need D with D dagger. And also D tilde with D tilde dagger. OK? Now to keep track of, of uh, which of these operators is fermionic, which bosonic, I uh, also need to define the signature. So I mean, S is uh, again, nothing uh, special. It is not defined, but I just uh, say that A, B, uh, A dagger, B dagger uh, have parity one, so they're bosonic. And then for C, C dagger, D, D dagger, and also tilde, D tilde, D tilde dagger, the parity is minus one. All right, that saves some time in <coughs> programming the algebra. So we can keep it on equal footing. All right, what else we need? Now, uh, so new ingredient is that now we have a uh, lot of this um, different operators, A, B, C, D. Uh, so the notion of the canonical form become more ambiguous. So we need to introduce some uh, weightings for different uh, operators so that Mathematica uh, knows in which order we order them. So let me introduce some weights. Should we use ordering? So um a will have weight b uh, one b two so we know that like a goes before b uh in the expressions and we want mathematica to reorder it until it's done right and then for uh, the conjugate i define negative weights so again, the goal is that all positive weight will go to the right. So annihilation will be at that. All right. So what else um, we need is probably relative parity. So we will use that. So it's better to define right now. So I want to define a function which basically it tells if I have two bosonic, A1 is bosonic, bosonic, then the result is bosonic, bosonic, fermionic, fermionic, bosonic is fermionic, and fermionic, fermionic is, um, sorry, 
that's not what I'm saying. I won't actually assign in a super commutator. So between uh, boson, 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 fermion is plus and fermion, fermion is minus one. So if S of A1, that's our query we defined before, is minus one and S of A2 is minus one, then it is minus one, otherwise it's one. All right, and finally, so I I will I want to distinguish different um, to test whether some quantity is an operator or a scalar, right? And uh, we already have this S defined. So basically, uh, for each operator, we have the corresponding S. So I just define this as absolute value of S is one. Then it is an operator. So in other words, a operator of a is operator, and a a is a is operator. No, it's not operator. Why it's not an operator? Because it doesn't have argument. So now it is an argument operator. If I have triple a, it's, it's false, right? So what is this triple equal equal equal? So it's only it it always returns either false or true. Uh, so the difference would be, for example, if I, I write double equal, then it will keep it unevaluated because who knows what is AAA, eventually AA could become AA. That's the logic behind uh, double equal. So it doesn't necessarily return uh, final conclusion. If you want like to conclude on the spot, whether it's operator or not, you need AAA, so it's more serious and more responsible answer from Mathematica to follow. All right, so this is our test function. Remember, like before, in escalators, we were using question mark number Q. Now we can use question mark op to check operators. And uh, now we are ready to uh, define. So this is just, you know, uh, to, to keep our life a bit uh, simpler. Now we can define our operator algebra in just in a few rules again. So what are the rule? Rule one is A1. Okay, let's not use A1 because it's confusing. O1, if it is an operator, separated with dot with another operator. And this equation mark op is just to verify that indeed we are dealing with an operator, that it is already defined in our ecosystem. Uh, then interchange it with sign S, depending on whether they're bosonic or fermionic, and add the commutator of one or this or two. Um, right. And actually, uh, we want to do if, if weight of O1 is what is bigger, so bigger weight should go to the right. So it is O2. All right, I just realized that uh, I, I made the wrong uh, uh, definition. So I need here you see arguments as well, right? Because my uh, operator op will come with the index uh, for A and B. So I need uh, to define W the weight uh, which would return me something for a with any underscore so this with any index so i added this uh, underscore for abc and the daggers as well all right so now this is uh, our rule let's give it a try rule one you see it does interchange a and b i mean it also produces this undefined commutator between b and a1 but this is something we'll have to deal with and I can just define the rule two, or oh, okay, actually in my notes it's rule three. Uh, so if you have commutator which is undefined, just uh, assume it is zero. All right, so rule three. Let's be uh, like that. Now, um, what what else? Another imperfection is that if I have a two a's. It doesn't matter in which order I write, it will keep them in the same order. So the reason is they both have the same weight, right? And so this rule number one won't apply 
in this case. So I have to add another case of when the weights are the same. I just see whether uh, those operators are ordered in lexicograph uh, graphical order, whatever Mathematica No, So now you see um, it, it nicely rearranged them. So A1 goes first in both cases. So finally, what's left is rule two. So, uh, because you see, we were lazy and defined commutators only with A with A dagger, but of course, Mathematica has no clues and uh, commutator is either symmetric or anti symmetric. So I just, uh, before replacing commutators with zero, I have to uh, run the replacement rule. So I replace it by the sign, uh, depending on the parities of A and B, and replace A with B. You see, so this rule should be really applied before three. So before killing all the commutators, I, I should give it another chance by interchanging the argument. So if uh, it is defined for an opposite order of argument, then um, uh, mathematically will replace it by the chronicler. And if not, it's time for this commutator to go. It will be replaced by three. In practice, we want something like this. Uh, all right, so I, and let's define the same way as before our function m, which is for commute, uh, just by combining all these rules together and expand all just to keep it nice and expand it. And what else is needed? Uh, I will need this. I need capital CM fixed point. So we want to be able to apply this small CM until uh, any changes are required. All right, so this is not super exciting. B is B, B dagger, A dagger, A, A2, just to check that it works. And if I put it this way, I get Kronecker AB. So this is not perfect. So what is going on here? Um, uh, the reason is, you see, I'm stupidly defined A and B, and it should be alpha and beta. Okay, you probably were confused all this time, but my, now it works perfectly. So let me pause and see what's next. All right, so now uh, another imperfection uh, that B1 looks ugly. All right, I already run my formatting but we also need to do this formatting like before so bt becomes b tilde in the output bt dagger becomes bt dagger just so everything looks more neat uh, and another thing i can just copy uh, from the previous discussion this rule four five six which uh, implements linearity of the dot operation so just add here this rules as well All right. All right. So next, uh, what we do, we have to um, define algebra generators of uh, SU2 comma two slash two uh, in terms of this oscillator algebra. So it happens that all the generators of uh, the super algebra are just bilinear combinations of this oscillators. So it's very uh, useful uh, to have the oscillators in practice and. And uh, then you can build all the generators in terms of them. And we have already, fortunately, implemented all the A's and B's. So now it's just a bit boring stage where you have to type all these generators, right? So unfortunately, there is no better way of doing that because we have to now combine something humans created, his names for generators and some particular uh, separation between different uh, generators into different groups um, into our nice and neat oscillator algebra. So uh, I just uh, leave you uh, to type it or you should be able to find the notebook attached to this uh, video. 
All right, now uh, that's the time to give it a test. So uh, this operator C, for example, uh, should be a Casimir, which means it should commute with all other generators. So presumably this commutator should be zero. So if we try, you see it still keeps running because this bracket is uh, still golden and there is uh, running, so never stops, which means that we are in infinite loop situation. So let's try with small CM, which applies it only once. So you see, actually, it does work. It does do something. We do it second time. It's still happy. But for the third time, you see, it goes in the infinite loop. So the reason for that, I concluded, is the following, that we stupidly applied rule two uh, many, many, many times, right? But it actually, uh, what it does, it flips uh, the arguments of the commutator from one to another. And so that's an infinite series of transformations. So we actually have to apply rule to once. And then if it doesn't help, if it doesn't find commutator, which is defined, replace it immediately by zero. So again, this doesn't require rule three, don't require repeated application. All right, this is one thing. Let's see if it works now. So you see now it goes through and I can try to apply fixed point. So then it doesn't simplify it uh, totally. And you can see what's, uh, what's uh, the problem. So you see this D tilde stays to the left and here D tilde stays to the right. So, but presumably it should order everything in the canonical way. So, and uh, uh, the mistake should be somewhere in order into in the canonical way, which is rule one. And rule one, you see it uses this weight function. And also it uses this uh, operator function. So, and the mistake actually is an operator function, the way it's defined, because I stupidly added arguments to this Ds, right? So Ds, they don't have arguments. So D, and the dagger and the tilde that shouldn't have any uh, underscores here, right? Because we don't define. So now you see it works perfectly, and we get zero for that. All right. So now uh, some more complicated test. There is also quadratic Casimir. So let's uh, give it a go. I just copy it from another notebook. Um, Maybe with a title possible. Okay. All right. And actually, uh, we may find that there is another problem. So let me take the first term. And you see, I'm trying to simplify it, bring to the canonical way uh, form. And again, it's stuck. So I have to stop calculation with a command dot. Right. I probably had to mention it before. So if we again debug it step by step, by applying several times, you can notice that at some stage, again, it stocks. And the reason is that if I apply the rule one, it creates me all this commutator, but you see it's, it come and tries to commute B uh, to dagger with itself and it produces a commutator. Um, so that's a bit of a problem, right? So we need to, to debug a bit further. Um, so you see, again, the problem is with rule one. So if I go to rule one and see uh, what actually we don't want to apply this rule when O1 and O2 are the same. Uh, so in other words, uh, if they're the same, we go into this bit, right? Which uh, applies when weights of O1 and O2 are equal. And then it checks uh, whether they're ordered or not. So order Q, you see the function. So if I keep A and B, this is ordered. B, A is not ordered. But also A, A is also ordered. But I don't want it to be uh, applicable in this case. And actually what I mean is if O1 and O2 are not ordered, then apply the rule which interchange them. Right? This automatically will exclude the situation when they're both equal rule one won't be uh, applied anymore so don't forget to run this and hopefully this will work now 
So let me replace all this mess with my mega function cm. And you see now it does uh, stop and simplify to some point. Okay, so that's our quadratic Casimir uh, computed explicitly in terms of the commutator. So we can, you know, make a check again that it commutes with say, the dilatation operator. So that we have to apply CM. Okay, and does give zero. Uh, so perfect. So now we have our algebra hopefully defined. We may want to make a few further tests. Um, so we want to see some commutation relations. So let me just uh, uh, show you some of them. So let's now check that all other generators also commute with um, the Casimir, the quadratic Casimir. So for that, I made the list of all generators possible. Um, right, just combine them together with join uh, function. So you know, join will combine two lists together in case you haven't seen that. And then I'd also do flatten. So uh, because some of these matrices are quadratic, um, some are just uh, one dimensional list. So flatten will bring everything to just one dimensional and to merge together. So that's all my generators. Some of them are actually linearly dependent, but in total 39. Uh, and now I can do A. Okay, let's not use A, capital A. Pj minus Pj A. And I want A to run through all my generators. So I just do table and A will iterate through all my generators. Okay, and then uh, inside I want to use my mega function. So let's uh, hope it will work. All right, so don't commute with all of them. Uh, all right, and the reason is, you can see it easily, that all these terms which do not commute, they actually contain uh, fermionic oscillator twice. So maybe we need to add another rule, which says that if there are two fermionic, two fermionic oscillators, uh, C squared then is zero. Rule seven is A1 dot A2. And actually, so here is important to emphasize something. Now, O1, O2. So you see uh, this, is actually a very subtle uh, point, but it's important to put space between underscore and dot because underscore dot is mean something else. If you want a dot between two, uh, put a space or even a safe option, just write dot explicitly. Okay, otherwise, dot in interferes with patterns. All right, so we want to set it to zero if. O1 actually is O2, let's say uh, in top front. And then S of O1 is minus one, right? So that will be our rule, rule seven. So let's not play this fine, let's apply it once. Okay, let's see now, let's hope it won't corrupt. I'm a bit improvising now, so I'm in danger. So fingers crossed, I don't need to re-record. Re okay, perfect, see? So now everything commutes, perfect. All right, now again, I didn't test this part, uh, uh, but we can start uh, looking into different commutators just to check uh, the commutation relation with textbooks. So Q with S is particularly uh, complicated. And you see, okay, I just uh, evaluate, simplify with my function, and left-hand side cancels right-hand side perfectly, right? So this all this commutation relations will be in the notebook, attached, and you can check everything works. So now uh, it's time for the problem for you. So the problem looks as follows. Uh, you have to pick two um, conjugate to each other 
supersymmetry generators. So for example, Q11 and S11, and then they find a subalgebra, uh, uh, find the subspace of all your linear, of all your generators, which commutes with this tool. So now you have all these tools. It's really straightforward. You just have to form linear combination, uh, the more general linear combination, and require that commutator with this linear combination is zero. And that in this particular case, you should get this result. And that uh, uh, links uh, nicely to the uh, exercise uh, sheet of uh, the main lecture of uh, Alonti this week. Uh, so I hope uh, you found this lecture useful. And uh, if you have further suggestions uh, for type of calculations you want to see how to do in Mathematica, let me know on uh, my email, which will appear now. All right, thank you, subscribe, and see you later.